Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 5 of my Create Mod tutorial series. If you missed episode 4 of my tutorial series, feel free to go check out that episode in the top right hand corner of the screen. But for this episode, we're going to be covering all of the power sources inside of the Create Mod and how you can utilize them in all of the future videos and your own creations. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to go ahead and drop a like and subscribe for more content. But without holding back any further, let's jump into the video. All right, so to get started, this video is gonna be a little bit interesting in the sense that there's gonna be some things that we're gonna craft, but you can kind of hold back and just watch the video and then just keep these things in mind for future machines that we make. But we're gonna go over every single power source inside of the Create Mod, which ones are good in certain scenarios and things along those lines. So more of an informational style video, but still highly recommend that you watch it. So to start out, the very first power source that we have actually gone over previously is the hand crank. Of course, the hand crank, if we go ahead and look at a crafting recipe, is made with a shaft, three planks, and an andesite alloy. And the whole idea behind the hand crank is it allows you, as a player, to actually right-click or shift right-click in order to power a certain system. Now, something that's going to be super helpful for this video is our engineer's goggles that we have uh, created, I believe, in episode two, maybe. And this is going to allow us to see the stress units being outputted by our machine. So you can see if we right-click, we're going to go ahead and make 256 stress units, same as shift right-clicking. Now, I'm in peaceful mode. If I'm in easy, normal, hard mode, it would actually take away some hunger bars using that. So that is a downside to this. Of course, also, this machine is not automated as well. So hand crank. The most basic, great for if you are like building a new base at a different location, you just need one machine up and running, hand crank is the way to go. And that brings us to our next machine, which is our water wheel, something else that we have also covered in many of the previous episodes, which is basically our hand crank on steroids. So it allows you to automate processes, but also creating the exact same amount of 256 stress units. Now that is with this specific design where we have a water wheel placed down and then we actually have a block, as you can see, at the middle left-hand side of the water wheel. So you can see there's a little gap with no water. And that is allowing the water to touch almost every single side of the water wheel and actually create uh, a pretty good amount of power. Now, as I've also gone over, if we go over to this system, we can set up our water wheel with this design with a sole sand and two blocks of water on the left side. And now water is touching almost every single part of this water wheel and it will create 320 stress units. So a little bit more without having to do too much extra design, such as adding a second water wheel or things like that. So water wheels are great for kind of like the tinier machines that you want to go ahead and automate. Uh, you could also stack multiple of them if you want to go ahead and automate a large machine, but that's where it starts to take up some room. And that's where our next power machines are going to come into play. And just to quickly go over the crafting recipe of the water wheel, just in case this is one of your first videos you've seen, uh, it is slabs with a large cog wheel. That's how you can create a water wheel. Now let's head over to the next power source, which is our encased fans. And this is something probably a little interesting because we have used encased fans before, which the recipe is uh, a shaft, andesite casing, two cog wheels, and a propeller. And of course, propeller is four iron sheets and an andesite alloy. And we've used this to blow things in our system, such as like washing ores or something like that, but we've never used it to generate power, which we could actually do. Now, it will generate 64 stress units on each of these guys and each of these designs. And the gist is, is that you have an encased fan that is being arrowed down towards a, uh, a heated source. So a magma block, a uh, piece of lava, or a campfire. I recommend maybe using the magma block. It's not going to create fire, so you won't run into any issues. Uh, that's usually what I roll with, but it's going to only create 64 stress units and you can see it's going to spin very slowly. Now, you're probably going, so Rocket, when would I ever use this? So you would use this in scenarios where you just need a tiny bit of power, you want it to be automated, uh, and you don't really care too much about speed or something along those lines. And that's where when we start to automate our farms, these are going to come to play significantly because we don't want a gigantic water wheel. We don't have a hand crank. We don't want a windmill or something else that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, we just want some tiny power source that can power a machine. And that's where these are really going to come into play. So any type of like one machine that you need powered really quickly, encased fan, magma block, encased fan, lava or campfire is the way to go. Uh, just keep in mind you need the encased fan aimed at the heated source and you need a lever that's flicked on against the encased fan. All right, so our next power source to go over is going to be a little bit interesting in the sense that we've never built this in any of our videos so far. And it's the furnace engine plus the flywheel plus a furnace 
or a blast furnace. Probably a little confused, that's okay. I'm gonna take these engineer's goggles off for the time being, but in order to craft these guys, uh, you need either a blast furnace or a furnace. Now, if you use a blast furnace, you're gonna get two times efficiency over a regular furnace, so keep that in mind. Blast furnace might be a little bit more worth it. Uh, you are gonna need something in order to smelt. We're just gonna use coal and iron ore. Uh, it's just an easy thing to smelt. And we're gonna need a piston. We're gonna need two brass casings, five brass sheets, and 10 brass ingots. Now, for these guys to be able to craft, we need to mechanically craft them. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please go ahead and check out my episode where I went over how to build mechanical crafters. It's a lot, so you're going to want to watch that video before you watch this part of this video. Uh, but let's go over to our mechanical crafters. All right, so now that we've come over here, we're going to start with the flywheel, which is going to be brass ingots and a brass casing. So we're going to place one brass casing off to the left, and then we're going to place a bunch of brass ingots just like so, kind of like making a chest, but don't forget the brass casing off the left side. And then we'll just press our button because we had extra mechanical crafters that are left empty. So now this will all connect together and we'll make a flywheel. There we go, look at that. So we got a flywheel, so let's go ahead and make the furnace engine, which in order to do that, we're gonna go ahead and place a brass casing in the center, a piston off to the side, two brass ingots above and below the piston, and then just a bunch of brass sheets around the outside of that brass casing. And then we can press the button again and it should go ahead and turn into our furnace engine. There we go. We got our furnace engine. So let's head back over to our spot now really quickly and we can go ahead and set up our system. So to start out, we're gonna go ahead and grab our blast furnace and we'll grab our smelted items as well. We're gonna place down our blast furnace. Then we're gonna grab our furnace engine and we are going to want to place it off the side so that it attaches itself to the blast furnace. And then we're gonna go one, two blocks away and place down our flywheel. Now, make sure that you have these wires that have connected. If you place your flywheel like this, it'll look like it's connected, but this won't actually work. You need the wires to come out. So we're gonna give it a space just like so. Now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and throw our coal in, throw our iron ore in. You're gonna watch that our flywheel is gonna start spinning. And if we put our engineer's goggles on, it's actually creating 32,768 stress units. Yeah, that's a lot. So this is a great system. If you want to power practically everything of your entire base, you could do that off of a single furnace engine and a flywheel. The downside is that once this iron ore runs out and this fire goes away, it's going to stop our system. So Rocket, how could we fix that? So one of the future videos that I'm going to go over is how to automate this entire process and make it so that this thing will constantly run through a farm. Uh, going to be a little bit more challenging and easier said than done, but you can make that happen. But I want to make this as an option because once you have brass and things like that, you could set up a furnace engine and flywheel fairly easily without any problem. So uh, just keep that in mind, especially if you have tons of ore and tons of coal all the time, you could just run it like this whenever you want to have your system up and running. And this brings me to our last power source, and this is going to be our windmill. Now, our windmill is going to be uh, a very interesting power source. I think it is a little bit better than a water wheel, not as good as a furnace engine. So maybe this is the next thing that you can go ahead and craft. And the benefit behind all of it is that you can make it look really nice, such as a windmill design that we have going on right there. So let me go over how do we make one, how do we craft some items, things like that. So uh, in order to make a windmill, you are going to need a windmill bearing and you are going to need white sails or any type of sail, excuse me. Uh, so in order to make those, you need shafts, stone, sticks, white wool, andesite alloy, oak slabs, or any type of slab. And you can also dye these by just using your dye, right clicking on um, a sail or anything like that. So that's an optional thing if you would like to. Now, we're going to start out by crafting the white sail, and in order to craft the white sail, we need to make sail frames, which is just a bunch of sticks and an andesite alloy, makes eight of them. And then to make the white sail, you just add wool around sail frames, and that'll turn into eight white sails for us. Now, to make the windmill bearing, we're going to need to make a turntable, but then also a piece of stone and a shaft. The turntable is just a shaft and a, uh, and a wooden slab, turns into a turntable. And then the windmill bearing is just exactly the ingredients that we went over prior. So now that we've crafted our sails and our windmill bearing, Rocket, how do you make a windmill? <laughs> so uh, it's kind of up to you. So believe it or not, what we're looking at right here is actually a windmill that's moving currently, and it's actually creating 1,024 stress units, moving very slow, but creating 1,024 stress units. And you can already see 
the amount of water wheels that would be in order to make that much stress units is a lot larger than this very tiny little uh, sail structure that we have created. So the way that this works is that you attach a windmill bearing to a block. We've just used polished diorite. You could use any type of block. And then you could attach sails off of that block. Now, something to keep in mind is that in order for your machine to work, you need a minimum of eight sail-like blocks for it to work. Now, there is a way that you can do this with sails and then just use wool alongside it. It's not gonna look nice. I prefer just using sails. I'm just gonna bring that up. Um, but if you wanna attach like one sail and add some wool to it, you can get it to work. But overall, if you just make a bunch of sails, just like what we did right here, you just use eight of the sails that you made. It's really cheap and boom, you can now set up a system and make a ton of stress units and things like that. Now, uh, you can get really creative with those designs. So you can see that this is technically a windmill. We could hide this underground if we wanted to or put it on top of a machine or whatever we're looking for, as well as you could actually design a windmill just like this and make it look fairly unique. And you can even do, of course, designs with dies and things along those lines. I just want to say thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, drop a like, feel free to subscribe. Uh, I want to make a quick announcement that season two at this point should have just dropped on my server Rocket World. It's a create mod focused server. If you're interested in that, check out the link in the description. You can set an application in to go ahead and get whitelisted. Uh, but other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed and I will see you guys all in the next one.